All right, Shalom, Shalom, Rastafari, and Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. This is a this is a reasoning on the Shabbat day, the Senbet day. Stay tuned to the Rastafari Sabbatical Study, number forty two, actually forty two and forty three. Uh, Matot tribes and Masai, um, Masai, Masai, which means journeys, is a double portion. This Torah portion. Um, for the 27th, right? The 27th is uh, July 27th. So for the Shabbat of July 27th, 2012, is a double portion in the book of um, Numbers, in the book of um, um, the Midbar or in the Wilderness. Now what we're going to touch on here is we're still in this in this vid. We decided to watch this vid a little bit more. Um, this one, Age of Deceit. Fallen, fallen angels and the new world order. Now, as we mentioned before, there's a couple of things we want to just comment on this for the brothers and sisters. Um, this program is is interesting. It it, it has certain um, um, content or matter within it which we would recommend that one check out. But let's recognize that who the the folks doing this, you know, certain of for lack of a better word, and we have to reprove are certain whitewash Gentile Christians. You know what I'm saying? We noticed the amazing thing. They talk about all the evils in the world. And rarely will they mention the Holocaust of the lost sheep for 400 plus years. Rarely will they mention, you know, what black people, the lost sheep, or black folks go through because of this racism and that this racism is one of the clearest end time signs of the Luciferians, of the devil's conspiracy, and of global white supremacy. This is why Dr. Frances Cress Welsing says, um, based on her teacher, Nellie Fuller Jr., that if you don't understand white supremacy, then everything that you think you understand will confuse you. You understand? So when you watch this particular program or programs like it, and, and, and we, we, we should, we must. You know, and this is how we, we, we sharpen our swords. There's certain basics that we need to understand. And while watching the program, you know, we, <laughs> you know, we hear certain things in the program and we would like to make a commentary. This is why we still want to work on doing a commentary to a lot of these videos because a lot of the videos have good matter in it, the documentary, but then they're skewed. They're skewed. And they're awfully skewed because of this... Um, uh, this denial of Christ's humanity, you understand, and because of the continuous worship and excuse making for, 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 for this guy right here, you understand, of uh, for Caesar Borgias, you understand. In spite of all, they'll talk about the new age and the new ages, and they're somewhat correct. They're very correct in that part of it, but rarely will they see that this is really the beginning. You understand? See, 1492. Add 400 years to that. 1492, we have 1892, and the birth of the Son of Man, Lij Teferi, Lij Tefari, Ras Tefari, Kadamawi Haila Shalasi, or Haila Shalasi the first. But they did not go there, even though all of the evidence is stronger there than for their white, Gentile, Protestant, Roman, Catholic, so called misinterpretation of the good news of the gospel that becomes a God spell. So as sincere as many of these Christians, Europeans against the New World Order, Luciferians, so forth and so on are, we have to recognize what First John, I think it's First John, isn't it? It's in the first epistle of John where it speaks to us. And let's bring up that scripture for a moment in the epistle of of John, all right? So you already know who this is, right? Get, get, get a copy of this particular um, vid. Check it out on the Internet. My name is, is Caesar Cesare Borgia. You understand? Cesare or, or Caesar Borgia, right? This is really who this character is. The sixth, um, Pope Alexander the sixth illegitimate son. He became the so-called new image of Christ, and that's what the Bible speaks about, his name being blasphemed, and his, 
his humanity. In other words, the fact that he's not whitewashed. He's not blonde hair, blue eye. This is not Jesus. This is Caesar Bogier. See that, see that character right there? That's Caesar Bogier, the, the son of Pope Alexander VI. And he became the image, the global image for global white supremacy. So now let's check out this program right here. All right, and let's check out this program right here and take it off of there. Let's see if we can rewind this a little bit so we can give you at least a, a basic, a basic um, intro to it. We'll take it from roughly around here. All right, let's play it. Let's give it a moment. All right. With the free humanity from the bondage. Okay. Oh, okay, here with us go a little bit back right here. So it's amazing that, you know, for as as so-called goody, goody, goody Christians, you know, they're against the new world order, but they can't see white supremacy. They seem to be blind to global white supremacy. You know, and they, they seem to be blind to the suffering of God's people, of the lost sheep, of black folks. You know, and whenever they deal with Africa, so-called, or or black people in Africa, they usually show you some, you know, some, some so-called starving children eating some porridge or whatever like that. And they say, we have to do, you know, they're raising money in their so-called counterfeit Christian denominations, but they can't see that. that. Isn't that amazing, brothers and sisters? That they can't call white supremacy the devil. You know what I'm saying? They can't call the whitewashing of Christ's image the devil. And this is one of the reasons why, in spite of their best efforts, they still don't get it. Now, let's, let's watch this and prove our point. They couldn't resist. Here's ABC's Dan Harris. The videotape provides a grainy glimpse into what appear to be the initiation rituals of a secret society that's been around since 1832, with members that have gone on to be leaders of Wall Street and the White House, the Senate and the Supreme Court. They sort of try to scare the initiates, make them, uh, you know, disorient them, frighten them. New York Observer investigative reporter Ron Rosenbaum accompanied a team of Yale students who shot these pictures nine days ago. Rosenbaum's curiosity about the skull and bones was permanently piqued when, as a classmate of George W. Bush, he lived right next to the tomb, the group's heavily fortified home. From their perch, Rosenbaum and his cohorts taped the tomb's courtyard. What they captured, they say, was initiates, known as neophytes, being forced to kiss a skull, then members performing a mock killing. There is a biblical explanation for the ancient mystery schools and the idea of resurrecting Atlantis. After the fall of mankind in the garden, God says something very interesting to Satan. Let's pause it right here. All right, let's pause it right here. Now, I don't know if you can see it clearly. I'll read it. It says, and I will put enmity. This is from, this is God to Satan, Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity, which is hatred, which is hatred. This is based on the old hate, what we're witnessing, the old hate, enmity between thee and the woman. I'm speaking to Satan, you know, in the, in the disguise, in the mask, as it were, of the serpent in the garden. So he says he will put enmity, hatred between thee, the serpent seed, or the serpent, and the woman. Now it's very important that we connect this woman and recognize this woman in the fullness of reality with the black Madonna, you understand, know with the mother of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, all right? And between thy seed, so the serpent has a seed. That word seed means race. Make a note of that. The word seed means race and her seed and her race. You know, often you hear folks say, well, the woman doesn't have a seed. The woman doesn't have a seed. Right? And that's what they'd be saying. But what they're not understanding is that in the language, the Hebrew, and in the Afro-Shemitic language, the word seed, yes, can mean um, seed, uh, like sperm in that sense. But seed, we have also seed of different type of flowers and plants. 
and we also have seed in the sense of different races as well. You understand? And the womb, on a certain level, if you can receive it, is a type of a seed. Anyway, it says it, right, or he really, it shouldn't be it, but he shall bruise thy head, right, and thou shall bruise his heel. So it's saying that the seed of the serpent and the serpent in Revelation being revealed in our time is global white supremacy. All of this New World Age order stuff is based on that. And it's just uh, shameful and sad that a lot of the ones out there, some of the white folks and Christians who sincerely seem to be against um, this um, uh, New World Order and Satanism and Luciferianism and so-called some of the corruption, they first of all can't see because they are blind to the true humanity of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the life of them, they cannot accept the truth of him. They cannot accept that, as Pastor said, the Jews of 70 A.D. were of the Ethiopian prolem, he says in the Latin, were of the race, notice, of the seed, the race, of the Ethiopians. Now, if we take that historical data, and that's going well way past a lot of this psychobabble and mumbo jumbo that we get in the modern, in the modern media and the modern educational system. So, what we see here is two seeds. It's two races. All right. It shall bruise the the, the seed of the woman. You understand the true seed of Christ in his kingly character shall bruise the head, the ras, the head of the serpent. We see that being manifested during the time of Ketamawi Haile Selassie. We see a very clear and evident manifestation of that in the time of His Majesty regarding um, World War II, the, the fascist invasion of Ethiopia by Benito Mussolini. And that's one reason why you might have seen a lot of war movies you understand, and, and other type of war documentaries, and they give Ethiopia little to no regard in it. This is part of the enmity, the enmity between thee and the woman. You understand, between thy seed, speaking to white supremacy, and her seed, and the black seed. You understand, the black Madonna seed, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is why the COINTEL um, program back from the 60s said it clearly. So we must stop the rise of the black Messiah because the only Messiah, the true Messiah, is the black Messiah. They recognize that. You understand? They recognize that. The Bible recognizes that. The history recognizes it. But why can't they recognize it? Let's understand this right here. So it says, it says right here, um, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So the serpent has bruised the progress of the King of Kings and his Christ, the progress of, of Africa redemption, of the African redemption, has been bruised, you understand, since the godless and creeping coup against his imperial majesty, against Christ and his kingly character. This is him. This is the reality. This is, this, this is no fakery. This is no um, renaissance painting. You understand, this is the reality. You know saying? This is revelation. You know saying? This is revelation being fulfilled. And we all know that if His Majesty were to be a king in Europe, you understand? Know a king in Europe that had the very same claims with the Ark of the Covenant and everything, they would have received this long time ago. The Negro pastors and preachers would have preached it long time ago. So either you can be with the truth, you understand? Know or you can continue to believe. The lie. So we have two seeds here, the seed of the serpent, all right? This is the seed of the serpent, and we have the seed of the woman. You know what I'm saying? And we have the seed of the woman. Just to help clarify that revelation right there. So let's go forward. Let's go forward with this. Let, let us go forward with this a little bit more so we get to our main our main point. This is the first prophecy recorded in the Bible. Her seed pertains to the coming Messiah and will free humanity from the bondage of sin of which Satan deceived humanity into accepting. It is also foreshadowing the virgin birth, since women are...
okay, you're going to talk six cents. Women don't have seed, rah, rah, rah. And so he kind of like mumble jumbles that right there. You know, as, as, because of the arrogance. There's still an arrogance about a lot of these people who claim to be Christian but cannot speak to the injustices to the lost sheep, to black folks. Now, I don't know if you can see this clearly right here, but it is showing um, her seed, and it has a, a, a painting of Jesus here, her seed right here. Now, he, listen carefully to what he says concerning this. And then think about the reality. About the ones who carry the seed. This coming Messiah would bruise thy head, meaning he would defeat Satan and his work. God also mentions thy seed and how he will only bruise thy heel. This is the seed of Satan. Thus the counterwind for Satan became clear. Disrupt the human genetic pool so that the pure bloodline of man will not bring forth the Messiah to redeem mankind. Ah, whoa. You heard that? Disrupt the genetic. And, you know, I took some notes when I first was watching. I said, what, 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 we, what have we here? What have we here, I wrote? We have so-called high-ranking white men, Europeans, modern Greco-Romans, worshiping Satan, or commonly called Luciferians, right? Commonly called Luciferian, Luciferianism. Now, Albert Pikey and Alice Bailey, they all promoted, you know, the European or modern white supremacist doctrine, which is based on that ancient hate, or we can further qualify it and call it what it is, that ancient hate or that, you remember the word? That enmity, that enmity. So we're going to ask white supremacy why you got so much enmity, you understand? Um... The ancient hate they call, you understand, know or the ancient hate so-called, right, enmity. In the words of Baby Bush, right, he calls it the ancient hope. There's an ancient hope, right? Now, this is a false hope to disrupt the black seed, to disrupt the melanin, you understand, but they have been carrying this out. We can see this. You understand, to disrupt the genetic code. Right? So there's a false hope out there. There's a false promise. It's a Luciferian false hope, a false promise. Woe to them, for they shall learn, if they repent not, that Satan, you understand, or Lucifer, so-called, careth not for any of them, even though they're white. See, see, the devil is a deceiver. The devil has deceived global white supremacy. And the devil careth not for white folks, even though it has lied and deceived them, you understand, into whitewashing the very image of our Lord and Savior and palming off this lie to the world from 14, since 1492. Remember, it says 400 years. 400 years from 1492 is 1892. And that's the real birth of the Son of Man in the biblical land of Ethiopia. You understand, this man was born there, as the Psalms so accurately states and says. So, all right. So these hopes, not these false hopes that they have, are not going to be fulfilled. Now, on this point of her seed and bruise thy head, we took some quick notes before getting into this. What are and were the real reasons for white supremacy's attempt to disrupt the black man's melanin, his DNA, you understand, and his God-given genetic code? Now, understand, this is all based on what we've just been addressing from the scriptures, right? It's all based on Genesis 3 and 15. You understand, speaking about that enmity. Besides the primus nature of the clean leper's recessive anomalies, the primus, the, the first facts concerning the so-called clean lepers, you understand, recessive anomalies, the real reasons are not always so clearly evident. Modern Anglo-Americans, you understand, um, they were the first major success, attempts at this success, this, this experiment. Remember what they call America? America's experiment. Even this documentary, they tell you, it was not based on so-called constitution or really even Judeo-Christian principles and truth as establishment of this. It was based on deists. You understand? Who believe that the, the, the devil, Satan, 
you understand, and the counterfeit Christ, you understand, the so-called blonde hair, blue-eyed Christ, you understand, is God. You understand? And that's all going back to the seed of, of Satan versus the woman versus the black woman. This is why when you look in, in um, How to Make a Slave, if you look at How to Make a Slave and you read the Willie Lynch papers, you see clearly in the Willie Lynch papers it says something to reverse the roles, right? To reverse the nature. To disrupt basically that genetic code. You understand? Because so much is embedded in that genetic code. So the Anglo-American... USA, you understand, um, the uh, Anglo-American experiment and, 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 and slavery or the enslavement of the lost sheep, that was the first major success. The Woolly Lynch experiment was somewhat successful in this, uh, in this manifestation of the enmity of the ancient plot and conspiracy against the first Adam or the black man. But for what reason? For what reason did they want to disrupt this? It's telling you right here, you understand, but they disguise it. Perhaps they don't even know it, you understand, but I and I know it. Therefore, as it says, um, I believe, so I spoke. In other words, I and I trust in admitting this, so we speak and so we teach, that this is to stop the rise of the black Messiah. Now, we have real evidence. You know what I'm saying? We have real-time evidence. How come they never talk about the COINTELPRO program? you in any of these things, to stop the rise of the black messiah. Why would their government, which they fund, you know what I'm which they support, which they, which, which, which they fight and die and bleed blood for, why would it do that to this oppressed group of people, you know what I'm who are called Negroes, blacks, and coloreds, and spoons, uh, or coons, and, 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 uh, and all, sort of the, all sort of names, every, every name, we've been called every name except sons of what? Sons and daughters of God. Sons and daughters of God. So COINTEL Pro program, which, to, which was designed, right, its major effort was to stop, let me just put this here for on my own notes, to stop the rise, this is in its own words, stop the rise of the black Messiah. It didn't say of the white Messiah. It didn't say of any Messiah. It didn't say of Christ Jesus or anything like that. Because they already know they've whitewashed that Christ Jesus you know, has been blasphemed. You know, because when you think of Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ, what image comes up to your mind? You see, the Bible says that the devil, Satan, Lucifer, that old dragon, has deceived the whole world. They would tell you, well, this is going to come to pass. We tell you it has already come to pass. You're already in it. You know, and they tell you that a lot of these things are still to come. We say they are happening, and many of these things have already happened. So they sought to disrupt this genetic code, uh, a word that was kind of given to I and I want to share with you. You understand? Is, you know, we talk about, what, what was it, blacks? Black people marrying outside of their race. You know, right? black people marrying outside of their seed. So every time you hear the word race, think about seed. Every time you hear the word seed, biblically speaking, think about race. See, and, when, and when, those, when those two now become one in spirit and in truth, then you'll be able to see. Then the veil is taken off of your eyes. So they say that black people, right? They say that blacks are always marrying outside of their race. Why is black people always marrying outside of their race? But really, I, and I was reminded that it's not really black people who are always marrying outside of their race, but it's actually white people because of those same genetic, you know what I'm saying? abnormalities, recessiveness, deficiencies that is a part of that old-time curse. You know what I'm saying? There's a, there's a particular curse there, and they, and they know that. You know what I'm saying? This is what creates this enmity. This is why in, in, in throughout these programs like Age of Deceit, what, they, they'll talk about the Holocaust of the European Jews because when they see the European Jews, they see Europeans like themselves. And they feel a natural so-called sense, you know, of, of, of enmity. It's like when animals, an uh, animal get killed and another animal, you can see it has some sort of, and one will say, well, it has soul. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't have man's soul. Another trick they do in a lot of these programs, take note of it, is they will replace, they, they will say mankind when they should say man, and they will say man when they should say mankind. They were versatile two things. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he taught us, you understand, that 
it's we, it's the black man who truly is man that was created in the image and after the likeness of God. Even if you look at the biblical story interpretation that man was made from the dust of the ground or, or, or from the earth, right? You know that rich red black soil that you find mostly in, um, in native part, in the root race parts of the world like Africa? You know, the thing you see that rich red soil, you look in ancient Egypt, you see how the Egyptians um, 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 depicted themselves, how they painted themselves. And then white supremacy will still tell us that these people were not African people. They were not black people. I mean, they will lie about evidence that's so clear. So how can we trust them to reveal the mysteries of God in Christ? Well, it's not for them to reveal the mysteries of God in Christ because they do not know, because they do not have a love of the truth. You see, if white supremacy, if any white people out there really are moved by this mess and you really seek to know the truth, you really have to recognize the difference, you understand, between this right here. You have to recognize who this, who this is. And y'all got to start speaking up on that. You understand, the righteous Gentiles, you understand, are trying to help their own white people, you understand, to recognize who this is, that this is a fraud, that this is a lie, that Jesus, that Christ is black, you understand, and that their whole race has been deceived by Satan, by the devil. The devil don't really care for white people. The devil know white people are not superior. As I said, the devil's a liar. So when you hear about white supremacy, it's a lie. You understand? It's a lie. But see, a lot of these Christian folk right here, though they may not be overt white supremacists, they don't have a love of the truth. Because if you speak about Christ being woolly here and black, they will, they will try a, 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 may, a zillion ways from Sunday to deny it, to try to act like, well, it's not really important what race he is. That is a lie. I, I, how do we prove this to you? Well, we go to 1 John, 1 John, right? Um, John's epistle, which is the first epistle of John, where it speaks about the family, it speaks about, Miss Gunner, the family and the world, right? The family and the world. It says right here that the children are warned against false teachers. It says, beloved, believe or accept not as truth. Don't, have, don't trust it. Don't give them no credit. Don't accredit them. You understand? Um, every spirit. But try the spirits whether they are of God. That's why I say watching these sort of programs are good to try your spirit, whether whether your spirit is, is full, you understand, of that word, or whether you still have more growing to do, whether you can detect these things and to test these things and to try these things, right, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, what are the marks of the false teachers? It says the false doctrine of Christ's person, the false doctrine of Christ's person. So we want to give you a visual of this once again, right? It says right here, the false doctrine of Christ's person. This is the false doctrine right here of Christ's person, right? This is the false doctrine of Christ's person because he's not Christ. He's Cesare Borgia. He sees the Borgia. You understand? This is the image that has deceived the whole world. You know what I'm saying? Even, especially even black folks deceived by this can't get this. You know what I'm saying? Look at these Africans. Even the Ethiopians now worshiping Caesar Borgia. You know what I'm saying? No one recognize these Im this image was actually painted and first created roughly in the 15th century, 15th and 16th century. And, and in the Ethiopian catacombs and, and the underground churches and monasteries, we still see to this day the original first century images of the black Madonna and child. So how can the Pope be worshiping in the back room a black Madonna, and then in the front room he puts this out? Because the devil has deceived the whole world. False prophets are going out into the whole world. So the marks of the false teachers is the false doctrine of Christ's person. And we're, we're reading here from the first epistle of John chapter 4. And we're at verse 2. So we're going to go over the false teaching of Christ's person. The false teaching of Christ's person in a so-called nutshell is basically this. Accept this image. 
even though if you say, well, Christ really was black and you bring the evidence, they'll say it doesn't matter what, what, what color he was. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what race he was. You see, you see how that's blasphemy since race is seed? It doesn't matter what race he was. Because if you focus on that point, as the gospel writer right here in First John does, he says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, the true Spirit of Ha Elohim. Every spirit that confesseth, that bears witness that Jesus Christos is come in the flesh, is of God. The overstanding of that, that he has come in the black flesh, he has come as a black man, he has come as one of us. He has come in the Ethiopum prolum, as Tacitus, the Roman historian, said that the Jews of 70 A.D. were of the race of the Ethiopians. You know what I'm saying? This is why it shouldn't surprise us that we have the Ethiopian eunuch, you know what I'm saying, who's going to Jerusalem as a Jew, because he was a black Jew from that root of the blackest Jew that the world ever knew. Speaking of Jesse, the, the, all right, you know, Jesse, the father of David, all right? So now in um, Revelation, hold this for a moment, in Revelation, we have the greater David, right? We have the greater David. Now, who is this greater David? Well, let's show you right here once again. It's this greater David, all right? This is a precious picture, you know, all right? This is the ancient of days. This is the greater David. Remember, it talks about that kingdom being set up and that there will be the ancient of days upon that throne of David. The throne of David is not up in the sky. The throne of God is not up in the sky. The throne of David is established on this very earth. You see who they have betrayed, you understand? Christ in his kingly character, you understand? They have betrayed the Son, and they have betrayed the Father. And the Father and the Son is one. Let us show you, show you uh, another, um, as we say, eye trait, you understand? Because God does not have no, any poor traits, you understand? You can call the white Jesus pictures poor traits, you understand? Because that's what they are. They are poor traits. Of fallen man, you understand? They are poor traits of the of the devil's enmity, the devil's enmity, the devil's hatred. This is the this is what this old hatred, this old enmity is all about. You understand? This is the seed of the woman. You understand? This is the seed of the woman. This is real. You understand? This is real. And the mercy of John has given them time. You understand to check it out and to find the truth for themselves. So the Ethiopia connection is very, very significant. You know when it says there was war in heaven, that this that this um, abomination and blasphemy has reached all the way up into heaven because it has, because they have rejected this, right? They have rejected this, and they have accepted in its place Antichrist. 1492. They've gone backward and not forward. You understand? So, so recognize that right there. So let's go into this a little bit more. Um, um, Brother Han. Okay, Yehun. It says right here, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. You understand? Those who do not confess that. Let me get this ice tray right here. Let me get this ice tray right here. We'll use them again, you know, just as, okay, you remember this one right here? Okay, let's see. There we go. All right. All right, two sons. This is one of the Imeros, right? Imero 39 right here from um, Zebulon World or Zebulon's Month, October 1996, the two sons. You understand? God the Father, the Overstand, the Son of God. The overstand, the overs. Now, everyone that 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 denies this is why we said that the Russian Orthodox, <laughs> you know, the Russian Orthodox images, you know, the Russian Orthodox images are actually more Ethiopian actually than the Ethiopian images. You overstand, and the images that the Ethiopian Church is using are Latin European Roman whitewash revisions. You overstand. 
So, so let's understand what, you know, what's really going on here. You know what I'm saying? Let's really understand what's really going on here. Just to give you a, a kind of an idea. You know what I'm saying? The idea. You see, when it says, except that Yeshua has come in the flesh, you know what I'm saying, of a Hebrew, of the Ethiopian prolum. You know what I'm saying? But then, in the latter days, it says this blasphemy would arise. All right? So, so get to recognize, well, who this, who this really is, you know? It says he would transform himself into a minister of light. But really, the truth is not in him. So, let us... um continue this right here just to give you an overstand. So every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christus has come in the flesh is not of God, and this is the spirit of Antichrist, of the opposer of Christ, like COINTELPRO. Is COINTELPRO not Antichrist? Is COINTELPRO. You heard about Stop the Rise of the... Are they Antichrist? See, for some folks, they can't really answer that because... They say, can anything good come from the black man? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? So, so they're wondering, like, black, black Messiah? If you said Messiah, they might get it. If you said the black Christ, you know, they're like, they, they really don't know because it really don't matter what race. See, that's a programming. That's a deception right there. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God. We are of John. Little children. We are little children. We are of John. We have overcome them. We've already overcome them. That's when we heard the guy in this in this program here say, you know, what if the Illuminati wave would just actually take over and do everything? What if? You understand? We said, what if? The Bible don't talk about no what if. It says, we are of John. We are of Ha Elohim as his little children, his dearly beloved children. And we have overcome them. Not we shall overcome like Martin Luther King. You know what I'm but we have already overcome them. Because greater, why? Because greater, what? Greater is he. Greater is who? Greater is he that is in you. He who is in I and I and I than he that is in the world. Who is in the world? This is the one, right? This is the one that's in the world. And I saw a bright light. You know what I mean? Yeah, you saw a bright light that it was Satan transforming himself to be a, a minister, you know what I'm saying, of righteousness. You understand? We feed people. We help them. We do a whole bunch of nice things for people. But we just can't admit the wickedness we have done to God's people. You know what I'm saying? Slavery, uh, well, you know. A lot of people being enslaved now. You know what I'm saying? You see, and even black folks talk about, anyway, the lost sheep will be lost. Because it says right here that the, the, the marks, of these false teachers, that they are of the world. They, therefore, speak they of the world. You're not trying to satisfy Jah's word, but they're trying to go along, to get along. You know what I'm saying? The world heareth them. We are of God. We are of Jah, Rastafari. He that knoweth Jah, he who knoweth the truth, the true God, heareth us. He that is not of Jah, heareth not I and I. They don't hear us. So if you're hearing this, you know what I'm saying? There's that spirit of truth in you, you know what I'm saying, that's trying to make itself conscious in you. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The spirit of truth from the spirit of error. So on the race point, is, is the race of Jesus, does the race of Christ matter? Of course it does. Let's just go on with this. We Like we said, we haven't got to the... The, one of the main points, but some of this background, some of this foundation needs to be built up. This is the reason for the flood. The final account of this attempt to disrupt the human genetic code, the Black Channel is six. It reads, quote, when man began to multiply on the face of the land and died. Now, 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 let's just pause this for a moment right here. You know, Genesis 6, go to Genesis chapter 6. This is really the the penultimate uh, of of the point right here the chapter six right here and and we've been hearing this a lot in, in a lot of these uh um european you know foreign national christians you understand non hebrew national christians out there you know though some of that program do talk about okay the new world order and this one and bush and such and such and such and such. yeah but um they usually make some very grave theological errors. 
And I think, I know, not just think, but I know it all goes forward to the point that they cannot receive the humanity of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can't receive the fact that Christ, Yeshua, that Jesus Christ is a black man or otherwise an Ethiopian. You are saying for the life of them. Perhaps perhaps it's a guilty conscience. Perhaps it's deception. Perhaps it's delusion. Perhaps some of them just don't know. Perhaps we haven't made the case clear enough. But hopefully we will. You know saying make this case clear enough. You know saying so we can bring this this dispensation to its conclusion and bring in the truth the true new world order of the King of Kings and his Christ. The, Bi the Bible talks about the new world order. You know, it's amazing these, these folks, they read the Bible, but they really don't understand. But it, it's a humanity. It's the flesh of Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? It's the flesh of Yeshua that, that makes that difference. So whenever they say it doesn't matter what race, it's like saying it doesn't matter what seed. You know what I'm saying? What seed. Now, here, in this particular quote right here, this kind of... Here in this particular quote, um, this uh, narrator here in Age of the Seed is going to make a point. You know what I'm saying? Or make a, a point that they have made. Mainly they say that the sons of God, the sons of God are the fallen angels. And we've been studying this particular point for a while, going to some of the original, the prime source material in the Ethiopic, and to all the translations of the book of Hanok, the book of Enoch, um, uh, uh, Kufale or Little Genesis, otherwise known as the Book of uh, Jubilees, you understand? To really compare these things in the Scriptures, looking in the Septuagint, looking into the um, Masoretic, and of course in the pure language, the Metaph Kedus, or the Book of the Seven Seals of Moa Anbesa, the Imanegeta Yehuda, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, he who sits on the throne, Kedamawi Hila. Salase, Siyuma Egziavi here, Nugusa Neges, Ze Ethiopia. All right? Him. He who is him. The Ancient of Days. And what we find is that, as with many other key points that regards or touches on race, that the Gentiles, you understand, and global white supremacy in whatever disguise is wrongly guided, even among these so-called Christians, you know what I'm saying, who otherwise seem very truthful, honest, and innocent, and really sincere about trying to get the message out to people to oppose the New World Order because it's evil and Lucifer then to genetics and then to evolution. Uh, they're not into slavery. Mm -hmm. They're not into black race hatred. They're not into those sort of things. That's not what this whole country w was established to, to, to thee, speaking of their, their Satan, their evils. They wasn't deceived by white supremacy. All the time they were saying that white people are superior, black people are inferior, and having all those things um, proven false. They have yet to say, you know, we were wrong about that. You understand? And we were deceived by the devil. We were deceived by Satan. You know what I'm saying? You know, thinking that we are superior because we're white and whitewashing Jesus. How come we haven't heard that as of yet? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, here it says, when man began to multiply on the face of the land. Well, this is, a, this is these, they also use these funny translations. Many of the, these funny translations trace back to the same so-called um, New World Order. So we're going to go to the scriptures right here, right? And we're going to um, begin with Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, the flood. And the marriage, see, the, the Schofield is correct. If you have the Schofield reference Bible, says the marriage of the Cainites, the children of Cain, Ayan, with the Sethites, with the original Sethites, you know what I'm saying? Or the replacement of Abel or Hebel, you know what I'm who was killed by the first murderer. Remember how Christ distinguishes that? He says to the so-called Jews, he says, you are of your father. The devil, because he was a murderer from the beginning. You understand? And who was that first murderer? It was Cain. 
Wasn't that a family? It was a family affair, but a, a division in that first family. So it's also the vision coming out the original family. We know that the original man, or at least they admit that the original um, woman or the original mother, matriarch most likely is the black woman. You know, the Times and, and Newsweek and all those articles exploring Lucy kind of already admit that, really an Ethiopian woman, if we are to be more nationally correct. It says, then it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, right, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fear. That's not to say fear-skinned. They were light-skinned. It's not saying that. Mm -hmm. And not, that's not to deny that within the black race we have all shades and all, and all healthy colors. You know what I'm saying? We have all shades and all healthy colors. You know what I'm saying? But it basically means they were beautiful. Basically that they were beautiful. They were black and they were beautiful. And they took them wives of all which they chose. Right? Now then they have the warning of Yahweh of Jehovah. And Yahweh said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Right? That my spirit shall not always strive with man. Give you this overstanding right here. My spirit shall not always strive with man. For that he is also flesh. Remember, his majesty says, I am mortal. I am a man. I will be replaced by the oncoming generation. Right? Yet his days shall be in 120 years. Abba Kedus. Kedus, Kedus, Kedus. All right? Now, let's overstand that within this time. Since it's the 120th memorial of the visitation of his majesty or the birth of the Man child, Lich Teferi. Let's overstand that right there, right? All right. So now let's let, let's go further, right? So it says his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. That's the part that you see here in the in the in the new the NWO, the New World Order Bible. So you notice that they are going against the New World Order in a lot of these programs, and they're using the New World Order. And you just to pick sense out of the nonsense right here, right? So now the antediluvian civilization, the, the civilization before the flood, anta. That's what we say, anta. Is it anti? You know what I'm saying? Antichrist, or instead of Christ, another Christ. Anta. Anta Christ will be before Yeshua. Like the Old Testament was anta, not anti. You have to understand these, these nuances right there. But verse 4 says, there were giants in the earth in those days. Those are saying they were giants. Who are these giants? Mm -hmm. Who are these giants in the earth? You see, these are the fallen. These are the sons of 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 of, of Satan in a sense, not the sons of God, but the sons of Satan, or rather, the fallen angels. There were giants in the earth in those days. Semicolon. Then it says, and also after that, comma, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, that they bear children to them, the same became mighty men, right, mighty men, which were of old, which were of the Kedem, which were of the Kedem, men of renown. And you see, here's what they don't do. If you go into that word renown, you're going to find something interesting. The word renown actually means men of Hashem, men of the Shem. Hashem. You know where they make you think that Shem and Shemite is or uh, Semite is, is, is like the white Jews. They made up this word and everything. But really, biblically speaking, how could... See, if they translate the way it was and said these were men of Shem, then there'll be a confusion in some of their minds because then how we have Noah, he has three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. You know what I'm saying? And yet before he had them, there were men of renown. Renown mean they are known. They are known by their names. You know what I'm saying? Men of the name. Men of the Shem. Right? Now, what they say here, I want you to watch this particular point here, right? And check out what they say right here for, for themselves, and then we'll comment on it. Those were born to them. The sons of God saw that the daughters of men were attractive, and they took as their wives any they chose. 
Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. End quote. The sons of God mentioned here in the Hebrew is pronounced B'nai Ha Elohim. The Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the original Hebrew text, translates it as Angel of God. They are clearly uh, pause, describing fallen angels. Pause it right there. You notice be- now the Septuagint is not all that people crack it up to be. Let's just say that right there. All right? The, the Septuagint, you know, they say, well, Septuagint is always correct, so from so on. No, it's not. Now, Septuagint says they were angels, and this is where the confusion, you know what I'm saying? This is where um, the confusion comes in. You know what I'm saying? Because the Hebrew says, Bane Ha Elohim, the sons or the children of God. Now, what a lot of these folks in the age of deceit and the fallen angels and in popular so-called anti-Illuminati Christianity. And I think they are against this global secret society and everything, but they don't have their biblical facts right and exact. You understand? And the evil one knows that. They don't have their biblical their ducks lined up in a row. You understand? Now, what this, what this person is going to now kind of go through is some psychobabble that a lot of folks, they receive, but really, if you really pay attention, we're going to go through this once or so. If you really pay attention, it really makes no sense. So he's saying that because the Septuagint, which was allegedly a Greek translation, right, the original Septuagint was a Sabian, the Queen of Sheba's Bible. You know, then it was the original Ethiopian and later uh, the Coptic form of that. Some say actually the Septuagint, original one, which actually Septuagint means 70 Seven or seventy depends on how it's like the Sheba, Saba and Sheba also refer Sheva Shiva in the Hebrew refers to seven, but it can also refer to seventy. As we have Bamarinya, um, Seba is seventy, and we have Sabat which is seven. So we have that connection right there. So when it says the seventy Bible, it was based on the Sheba Bible or the Sabian Bible. And if you look at the Sabian language, you, you know, the language form, and then if you look at the, the, the Greek and the Coptic, you can see the links. Now, they would tell us that Coptic actually um, was developed from Greek. This is where they put the cart before the horse and make you go backwards. Because if you put the cart before the horse, the horse has enough sense not to push the cart, but instead to pull the cart, and so it's going to go in the opposite direction. So they put the cart before the horse, and say that um, Coptic came out of Greek. When history, their story, our story, and the true facts of the matter say that the Greeks learned how to read and write by the black Egyptians. It was the black Egyptians, the Afro-Shemites, who taught the European civilization. See, they don't want to admit that because of the enmity, because of that old hatred. You understand that old hatred. So let's go through this a little bit more. Because the Bible confirms this in Second Peter two four, where it states, "Quote: For if God spared not." Now hold on for a moment. They're going to say that the Bible confirms this. The Bible doesn't. A certain misinterpretation. You saying there's a certain misinterpretation that confirms this. So notice what happened. The Hebrew says, "Bani ha Elohim." Yeah, right, or they say Bene, depends on the pointing of the Nukat, you understand, or the Nukat, the, the, the voweling in the Hebrew. They say Bene or Bani Ha Elohim, which means the children of the God. You understand, the children of the God, right? It could be in translated as the children of the gods, but with the Ha there, it specifies, it makes that plural a plural majestic form, but implicit in it, is the Hebrew or the Jewish um, Trinity, which is a very, very good book by Yoel Natan. We might be able to have a study version of that for the brothers and sisters so they can recognize that when we speak about um, Shalus Kedus and, and Selassie, Yosin, or the Trinity, it's not a New Testament thing. You don't have to go to India or India. You don't have to go to some 
some little far off tribes broken off from the original Afro Shemitic branch. You can go to the very root and the Belui Kidan or the Old Covenant. Remember, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So we can't read this like those who have the veil over their eyes. You understand? Know and it is the Messiah, it's the Moshiach. It is it is Nagush Masi, Mashi, who takes that veil, Nagush Masi, who takes that veil, the King Messiah, who takes that veil from off our eyes. So they're gonna say right here, he already says that the that the Bible confirms this opinion. Now, the Hebrew Bible, the Masoretic, which is a far better, more accurate source, basically, than the Septuagint. And if you get into some of the biblical studies and everything, if you're, if you're, I think we would say, if you're into that, if you get into that, and, and there, might, there will be a time, I wasn't into that, but in the course of study, you, you go across it, and then you finally recognize the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I was saying what all these professors and experts are talking about. It's truly the Holy Spirit, as, um, as uh, John says, it's, it's that we have that holy unction. It's the Holy Spirit, you understand, that teaches us and shows us all things, in and through him at the right time in patience. But they're going to say right here that Second Peter, turn your Bibles to Second Peter 2 and 4. It says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to what? Hell, right? Hell, right? Or Sheol, right? Or in ancient Egypt, the Duat, the, the, the Duat or the Tuat, right? And delivered them into chains of what? Darkness. Delivered them into what? Chains of darkness. Remember? Chains of darkness. Keep that in mind. Chains, because we want to connect that chain with one of the tribes, you know what I'm saying, of these, of these angels, which have nothing to do with the sons of God, in except that the sons of God are the children of Adam's true lineage, the Sethites, who came down off of that mountain, you understand, and mingled and fornicated, you understand, with the rebellious tribe of the murderer of the Canaanites. This is why even Jude, which they're going to quote next as a confirmation for this skewed opinion concerning the sons of God. They're trying to tell us that the sons of God are actually the fallen angels. But according to our Ethiopic sources, that is false. That is a false paradigm. It's almost, it's almost a false positive in a sense, because it's false, but now he's saying, well, the New Testament confirms it in this verse right here. Notice you don't see anything about sons of God in this verse. But they say, well, they take a certain version of the Septuagint, a certain version of the Septuagint, which says, which, which mistranslates the sons. Here's the member that in the Greek world, the sons of God were considered like to be angels. So let's understand that as the gospel became more and more whitewashed, it, it, it was that also the doctrine became whitewashed by that white state of mind, that Euro-Gentile way of thinking. It's just like Negroes, blacks, and coloreds, though they are black people, if you look at them, they'll say they're African-American, and you'll try to ask yourself, what part of you is so-called African? That's why we use the kind of um, joke, say, half a can. They are half a can. That, that is the can half full or half empty. That's the question. So there's nothing in this particular verse that confirms that false Septuagint mistranslation. You know, them because when we look at the Ethiopic, it says the sons of God. When we look at the Hebrew, it says the sons of God. When we look at the, the, the Metzaf Kedus or the Amharic Bible of His Majesty, the King of Kings, Revelation 5.5 5 Bible, it says the sons of God. But they found some version that more appeals with this deception, you know, that they don't even recognize because they never even speak one time against white supremacy, so they cannot remove this deception because they don't identify. It's almost like the AIDS virus, the HIV virus, which they say the immune system cannot see the AIDS virus. You say when the immune system becomes blind, when your salvation becomes blind to it, then that virus, which is already on board, 
you know what I'm saying, which is a combination of everything that has been wrong and damaged in humanity's gene pool. It's not really a disease coming from out of space or something. It is really something that suppresses one's salvation or immunity. You know what I'm saying? And that's what allows these, these systemic anomalies within the genetic code going back to the first father, the black father of the entire human family, Adam. You understand? Know Which became, because of the deception, a dumb fool. You understand? Know like the black man has become a dumb fool. You understand? Know apart from the black Messiah, apart from Yeshua HaMoshiach, the King of Kings, and his Christ. So, God, Jah, did not spare the angels that sinned, but he cast them down. They were cast down. Right? And he delivered them into the chains of what? into the chains of darkness to be reserved to the judgment. You understand? And these are the days, these are the judgment days. We want to point out this book right here if you want to get the true story. You understand? The Gedla Adam, right? The Gedla Adam, the conflict of Adam and Eve against Satan, right? The Gedla Adam, right? Which was translated by Reverend C.S. Milan. Right, Caesar actually, his name is Caesar, but he makes a good translation of this right here. The Gedla Adam, the conflict of Adam against Satan, the Ethiopic book of Adam and Eve, right, translated by Reverend C.S. Milan, circa 1882. Now, this particular book, right, along with the book of Jubilees, it was known, right, as a part of the Ethiopic literature. Judeo-Christian Apocrypha, right? This book was known to first century Christians because actually the quotes that are being made, such as in Second Peter 2 and 4, as well as in um, Jude, the one chapter of Jude, you understand, is all based on this knowledge, right? Like we explained before, even in the, um, the Genesis verse, that verse explains everything there, but people, what happened, they, they look at the Nephilim when it talks about that there were giants in the earth. The Nephilim, the Nephilim, they are not the sons of God. If you look at the Hebrew, there's two different words, two different descriptions. It's like, almost like two different races, two different types of beings. You understand? The children of God, you understand, on one hand, and the Nephilim. So when we say keep a, make a mark of chains of darkness, there's the Anak, the Anak, the Anunnaki. You know then Those who were chained, the long necks, the long neck ones who were chained, they were to be reserved to the judgment. Now one will say, well, if they were to be reserved to, to, to the judgment, how do they pop up at these different times in the Old Testament? Because of sorcery and witchcraft. Mm-hmm. Because of source, it's, it's like the same thing that this guy, Alistair Crow, Crow, Crow Lee, you know what I'm saying? The Crow Lee, what, he, what him and those who follow him do. That he was communicating with certain, he thought extraterrestrials, angels, or whatnot like that, but really he was communicating with demons. You know what I mean? It's almost like somebody's in jail, right? Somebody's in jail, right? And, and you get to be a pen pal with this person in jail. Right, and they say, yeah, you know, so and so is my enemy over there. I hate that guy. If I can only get that, that guy to witness against him, but he's a liar. So if you could kill him for me, please, if you could murder him, then you know, then I can get out. And so the people who are communicating with these evil spirits. So remember, these angels, you know, what I'm saying? they've been cast down into hell. You know, what I'm saying? they they are in a spot. They're going to be released. Some say they might have already been released, but they're going to be released. But they're already in a spot. So what these people now, men and people, this is why in the Old Testament sorcery and witchcraft and, and, and certain other kind of practices, what, what one would call occult practices, were not just frowned on, but they were punishable by death. You see, because Moses understood and those who truly were in the wisdom of the Egypts or Egyptians like Moses, mighty in word and deed, he understood exactly what was going on. 
You know, so that's why it gives a whole litany that one not to suffer a witch to live or so forth and so on, so forth. And, because these ones were communicating with these entities, you know what I'm saying, and being the human agents, you know what I'm saying, on behalf of these beings. But nothing here in this verse, basically, let's just give you a little background on the fallen angels, but nothing here in this verse is talking about sons of God. But he believes it, so all this whole belief is based on one thing and one thing only. It's based more on the Septuagint Greek than the Masoretic Hebrew. And in that earlier clip about Alice Bailey, she said, well, we can't rely on this and that and the next thing because Jewish sources. Why do these global white supremacists, you know what I'm saying, and neo-Nazis, it seems like the things, the two peoples that they hate the most are blacks and Jews. Have you noticed that? There's something up with that, don't you think? I'm, I'm saying blacks and so-called religious Jews, not crypto-Jews, not pseudo-Euro-Zionists, -Euro not, not nouveau-Euro-Zionists. We're not talking about them. You know what I'm saying? Because actually they work along with the white supremacists are part of that whole cabal right there, as many of the Hasidic brothers have gone out there on the record, you know, and to really point out that they're not dealing with Zionism, that Zionism, what you see going on in Israel is abomination to what they know, studying the word and seeking to live as a, as a convert, a chazal, or whatever, but to live Judaism in, in, in its purity. They even recognize something is wrong, you know, saying, with what their other namesakes the Jews who call themselves Jews are doing over there. So that's an that's a evidence as well. You know what I'm saying? But this one right here, they accept that because they're still a part of the same thing, but they're unconscious of it. You know what I'm saying? They're unconscious of it. Right? The angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. End quote. And in June 1 6, where it states, quote, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. End quote. Now, okay, this is the second quote from Jude. Can we go to Jude for a moment now? One, one more book and evidence. Some of you all have this. You can check it out on the, on the Internet just if you want to get a read of this. If you want to get a copy, you can go to our website, www.lojsociety.org forward slash books, and you can order a copy. And this particular book right here is um, The Queen of Sheba and Her Only Son, Minulik. Now, a lot of them out there, you know, basically say, oh, this is not real. So, but, Ain't no reason why they say it's not real because it's black, basically, because it's black and because it testifies to the true seed. You see the woman right there? Right? You see the woman, you see her seed. You know what I'm saying? You see the woman, you see her seed. You, you notice that in the East, they use the red, just like the red earth, to paint the, the, the blackness. You know what I'm saying? To paint that Ethiopian, should we say, complexion. You know what I'm To paint that particular Ethiopian complexion. They use the red, you know what I'm saying? Very much so. Now, it's in this document right here that we find something interesting and um, take this down as a note, right? Let's, let, let us go here and get to that chapter. I think it's chapter 110. I believe it's chapter 110. Let's check this chapter 110 and share with you a little bit of this right here so you can understand the real background from your own root. You know what I'm saying? From your own root, from I and I own root, and I and I own truth. Okay, is it, is it, one, oh, was it 110? Is it 110? Let's see. 110 concerning his uh, crucifixion. Okay, let me look at the table of contents. Give me a moment right here. Look at the table of contents. Um, let's see. Table of contents where it speaks about the angels, right? Concerning the, the angels that... Um, okay, that's just 100. It's on page 184 how the angels rebelled against God when he created Adam. I want you to understand that. How the angels, give me a little light over here, if you can. Um, how the angels right around here, how the angels, you see that, chapter 100, how the angels rebelled 
against God. They rebelled against God when he created Adam, Miss Ghana, when he created Adam, all right? How the angels rebelled against Jah, they rebelled against Ha Elohim, right? Because of his creation, right, of Adam. Now, this is, this is a very important aspect, and you have to remember this, that in the first century Christianity, they understood this truth. You understand? They understood this truth. Remember, there's a lot of books that are during the iconoclast phase where they, where they destroyed all the true images, such as images like this and other images of Jesus Christ, you understand, because of that enmity. You also said that that enmity. You remember that the Jews back then were black. It was known that the Jews back then, even in the Shakespeare plays, a lot of that's hidden within the narrative, were black. That's one reason why you find this enmity, you understand, against blacks and Jews among all of the neo Nazi and 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 white supremacist Luciferian cults and orders out there, all right? All right, so let's just get into this chapter right here momentarily. And it says, um, okay, from the very, uh, this is a, not, not very, well, it's a, it's a good chapter, but we want to focus, we want to focus on, on some of the aspects, right? So let's get into part of this, concerning the angels who rebelled. It says, and there were certain angels of whom God was raw. There were certain angels. And what it says right here, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, right, under ignorance, to the judgment of the great day. But now in white supremacy, they take that darkness right there, and they will make the darkness blackness. You have to understand how the devil is the deceiver and how the deceived are deceived. You understand? So Jah was wroth with them. Now he, the knower of the of the heart, knew them, and they reviled Adam, just like they. 